Welcome to CSL TV. And I just hope you guys are having a beautiful blessed day. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is just a review, a reaction, as well as an informational channel. Hopefully, the informational part helped you or someone out. We pretty much just gonna watch some news, watch some videos, and talk about them, educate us on crazy events and shit that happened in this world. But I don't wanna, you know what I'm saying, make this intro too long, so let's get it. This story out of Illinois is crazy. I can't drive in a this is Alberto Rallone, Zoraida Bartolome, and their two young boys, nine-year-old Adriel and seven-year-old Diego. Back in September during a welfare check, all four of them were found shot dead, execution style, along with their three dogs in their quiet suburban home just outside of Chicago. Police soon identified two persons of interest, a 31-year-old man and his 50-year-old fiance. Three days after this went down, they were spotted at a Walmart in Oklahoma buying what appeared to be a burner phone and hair dye. Body cam picks up after a police pursuit during which the man crashed his car into the median. Murder suspects armed and dangerous still inside the vehicle. Car's on fire! Get out of the car! Cops try to get the couple out when one hears something. Cops then descend on the vehicle, which is engulfed in flames. Do not see movement. No movement. Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! When the cops open the door, they pull the female suspect out and find she's been shot. Inside the car, which they continue to try to break into, the man was found dead with a gunshot wound. The woman was taken to the hospital, where she also died. Police believe this was a murder-suicide. Now, several months later, police think they're onto a motive. They say the 31-year-old shooter had been having a relationship with the mother of the two young boys. As of right now, it's not clear what that relationship was, and they're still piecing together a full account of why this all went down. So this right here is crazy. They didn't murder everybody down to the damn dogs, the kids. We show they had no type of nothing for nobody. Not even for themselves because somebody killed the other person and killed themselves after they was on this high speed chase. As we see in that Yukon, uh, maybe it's a Denali. But uh, y'all just gotta learn to love each other. Goddamn, even if it's not a genuine love, just hi neighbor, how are you? You know what I'm saying, type shit. You ain't even gotta be out here. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Like why did that family, why did that family get attacked? Why did that family have what they had, what they have? had what they had happen to him. And I know this is all investigating and it's still ongoing, but at the same time, man, I mean, shit. All the way down to the dog, the kids. I mean, man, rest in peace to that family, man. Someone was in his house with a crowbar looking for him. Are you afraid to come up? Hey, come on down, man. He attacked. <laughs> The Hicks family were made up of Timothy, his wife Amber, and their baby son Jacob. And they were living along leafy Verbena Drive, a lovely little neighborhood. Everybody seemed to get on well with them, moving in in September 2021. Unfortunately, not all the neighbors. So we about to get into some content from that guy, that chapter. Um, it's crazy what happened to this family. As you can see, beautiful smiles, everything, and you know, uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, it's free. Help your boy out. Like, comment, you know, all the good stuff. We're quite so lovely. 9.30 a.m. on the 18th of November, 2021, officers were called to that house. Investigating inside, they found the bodies of Justin Hicks and Amber Hicks. Both had been shot to death. Shot multiple times. Two-year-old Jacob Hicks was unharmed. He was found wandering the home. He had likely been with his deceased parents for some time. Right now, a motive is under investigation, but authorities believe the shooter or shooters broke into the home overnight. The police brings the child out holding him by his torso. Grandmother grabbed him, the grandpa grabbed him, they're crying, freaking out, and they said, where, where my, where's my baby? Why would somebody attack this lovely, hardworking young couple. It all led back to another family that, that shared a fence, the Lanz family. And they had two sons, 
Austin, born in 1994, and Matthew, born in 1999. Austin Lanz began to show signs of a schizoaffective disorder. Austin became obsessed with some neighbors. Philip Brent and his fiancée, Eliza Wells, they moved into the house on the other side of the fence in the summer of 2019. First couple of months, everything was grand. Then, uh, around December 2019, Philip Brent went to check his mailbox, and inside he saw a folded piece of paper. It was a pornographic image. Bit odd, probably just the local kids playing pranks. But then it happened again. And then in May, it happened again. The woman was only wearing a tiara, but in his, his mailbox also was a children's toy tiara. And now he was getting a bit freaked out. He called the cops. So they were just like, here, listen, uh, Philip, get some home security, CCTV. And then about two months later, in July of 2020, Philip woke up and he found a apple juice box with a cigarette inside, leaning against his garage door. Opened the app, went through the, the night's footage. And who did he see? Austin Lands. Every time they would drive by the Lands home, they would see him out front, smoking a cigarette. And he'd be there, he would wave creepily at them, he would like, give them this really creepy look. So they were already thinking this is the neighborhood weirdo, this is confirms. So you mean to tell me that this little young creep right here is talking to family because he has mental problems. And they know he got mental problems, nobody's watching him, trying to help him, anything like that, because you know, He's, he, he have issues that he was diagnosed with. So now he's messed with his family, you know, and we just heard about a family that just got murdered with the kid inside. So this don't sound too good. It's so Phil called the cops. The land's parents, they were extremely apologetic. They were like, oh my God, we're so, 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 so sorry. We'll get him help. Whether or not he actually got help, I don't think so. Philip and Eliza eventually broke off their engagement. Eliza left the house. Philip stayed, and the weird messages continued. One time, he awoke to a message on his door reading, I'm done wondering for real. What is the point of that? Philip then called Elise this time and decided to stay with his sister. In April of 2021, Philip got a notification from his home security. Someone was in his house. He saw Austin lands throwing the bed apart, throwing the bedroom apart with a crowbar. Austin was clearly looking for him. When he was arrested for criminal trespassing and burglary, Lance claimed police had been flying planes over the neighborhood and tracking his phone. Later that day, after he was booked into the Cobb County Jail, Lance is accused in a second warrant of attacking two deputies, dislocating one's thumb and leaving the other with a torn ACL and chipped knee bone. Well, How can this dude be that damn strong and, and powerful to the point that he did all this to a police officer and break the taste? Like, come on, he got mental problems, he ain't no fucking superhero. Destroying one of their tasers and making verbal threats against deputies. Austin was apparently shouting and roaring his head off at the officers. He was saying he wanted to take them all on one by one and was calling them gay because they were ganging up on him. A couple of weeks later, he was granted bond and he was ordered to undergo a mental health evaluation and substance abuse program. Seems unlikely that happened though. So Austin was out on July 18th and then he went to Virginia as he said he was gonna go get some work with his dad. Austin arrived in Washington, DC. On August 3rd, he stepped off a Metro bus right outside the Pentagon. A Pentagon police officer named George Gonzalez just happened to be nearby. He immediately attacked Officer Gonzalez with a knife. And there was a struggle with him ultimately killing Officer Gonzalez, stabbing him to death. When Officer Gonzalez was down on the ground, Austin took out his service weapon and shot himself in the head. Matthew, his younger brother, did he blame Philip and Eliza for what happened to his older brother Austin? Did he share the same mental illness his brother did? In November 2021, he perhaps sought revenge on the house across the fence. Only thing was that Philip had sold the house. He had moved out. The house was purchased by the Hicks family in August 2021. They were the ones living there then when he broke into the house sometime between 7 p.m. and midnight. Austin went in there with crowbar looking to kill somebody. Matthew, maybe he said he was gonna finish the job himself. He even collected the shell casings to avoid detection. Two days after the Hicks were killed on November 19th, police were called about a suspicious person in Fulton County and there had been a home invasion. Okay, has he got any weapons or anything like that? Seems that he was telling the police that he believed this was his house. They were under the impression that he was somebody who was, you know, not quite there and had gone into the wrong house. Why? Are you afraid to come up? No, I just am down here waiting for you. That's it. I can't handle this. Why not? 
You didn't come downstairs? Or are you too scared to come downstairs? Hey, come on down, man. Come on down. As soon as he got to the bottom of the stairs, he attacked. <laughs> The officer would suffer some pretty gnarly stab wounds, and Matthew would be shot twice. Both would survive. Matthew was arrested and charged with the attempted murder of that police officer. One man now accused of a double murder and stabbing a police officer in two different cities. Tactical backpack, binoculars. Those are some of the items cop police say they found in a car driven by Matthew Land. Detective Zachary Stanner testified that cell phone data shows Land's leaving his apartment in Athens where he was a student at UGA at 8 p.m. on November 17th. That same data shows Land's at the scene of the crime in Ackworth around 9 p.m. The detective said Land's drove back to his Athens apartment after the murder. His parents drove to Athens and asked him if he killed Justin and Amber Hicks. He denied it, but his parents saw the gun allegedly used in the murder. Matthew Lands is now sitting in the Fulton County Jail on a lot of charges. They say the Hicks family didn't know the suspect, Matt Lands, and had never even talked to him. And we're going to be talking to the DA about death penalty. And that is where the case of the Lands brothers remains today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. Let's just hope they learn their lesson this time when you have somebody who's that very violent and they have mental problems. I don't think they should let these folks out and tell them to go get help. They need to send them to where they need to go and make sure they properly get the help that they need because a lot of lives and destruction happen because of it. This guy didn't go get the help he needed. He just wanted to hurt people and a lot of lives were taken because of that. Now, they would have just sent him on to the place he needed to get help. Maybe they could have evaluated him when it was time for him to come out here and be with the rest of us in the world. He evidently wasn't ready for that. And, you know, this is where...